What's up, professional homegirls? It's your girl, Ebene, and we are back with a rewind episode that is very, very, very close to my heart. Now, this time, we are revisiting a fascinating conversation I had with my psychic. Yes, I have a psychic. I actually have a whole spiritual team, but that's another story. (laughs) Shout out to my amazing producer, Taylor, for recommending that we combine both parts because initially I wanted to do a part one and then y'all can go back and listen to part two. But because Taylor loved professional homegirls so much, we're going to put part one and part two together. So thanks, Taylor. Listening back, I was very moved by the part where I shared my experience when it comes to me feeling my grandmother's transition. And I don't know if you heard of this lady, Teresa Caputa. She is known as a Long Island medium, but she was on Sway in the morning discussing similar feelings that he had with his grandmother. And y'all, I was like stuck. And Teresa told Sway that the reason why he felt that is because it was his grandmother giving him one last hug. And man, y'all, that that really hit me hard because I just remember being in so much physical pain and especially emotional pain. And I couldn't even explain why, because it was literally a regular day for me until I found out the news. So as you know, like I said, this episode holds a very special place in my heart. So I hope you all enjoy. And I'm also thinking of bringing back some of my old guests to do some follow-up episodes. Maybe we can bring back my psychic. You know, I was listening to some very old episodes and I was like, damn, I was in my bag. (laughs) But I mean, it's been five years since I spoke to a lot of my guests. So tell me what you think. Which guests would you like to hear a follow-up from? Email me at hello at the phdpodcast.com. And without further ado, let's dive into I Am A Psychic Part 1 and 2, starting now. My connection is directly to God. It's almost like him, me and him having a conversation while I'm meeting. And he's telling me. So I don't use tarot cards or anything. And I think people get that kind of mixed up. Why do you think people get that mixed up? Um, Because people think... <laughs> You know, and no disrespect to anyone out there that uses tarot cards. I think you, everyone is I knew, amazing. I knew the shade was coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just think everybody's amazing who can do that. But I don't think that that is the same thing. I don't think tarot cards and psychics are the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. A psychic is born with these gifts. A psychic is born with these gifts. Um, and tarot card readers read cards. I'm not saying that you don't tap in. Because who are you tapped into? And I'm not right. knocking anybody. I just, why do you need those cards? If you're a psychic, you don't need the cards. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't need those. Right. So I have a question. So you know how, like, because I was trying to think of the correct uh, terminology, so I'm glad that you're here. So you know how, like, you have, like, uh, the sex work industry. So you have, like, the strippers, prostitutes, escorts, all of them are under sex work. What is a term for psychics, mediums, tarot card readers, fortune tellers? Like, is there a word to, like, an umbrella? Um, I would just call it spiritualists. You know, mm-hmm. you call it readers, spiritualists, the spiritual community. Um, okay. I don't think we've gotten that far yet. You know, um, I don't. Because remember, all of, this is, all of this is new, especially for Black people. Because mm-hmm. we had not applied before. You understand what I'm saying? You, if people, even, even, you know, in Santa Maria, I remember my grandmother, you know, people would kind of like be afraid of her. You know what I'm saying? Because she was a, a Santa, you know, and she did, she practiced Santeria, which is hoodoo. Mm-hmm. So back then it wasn't so like accepted. Now everybody's waking up, you know, everybody's awakening. So no, there was no umbrella. Do you think everybody's awakening or do you think it's a trend? Um, I think both. Mm. Um, I think that, you know, there, there's like the people who come from a long, uh, uh, come from a lineage of witches, of of mambas, of psychics. I think there is that. And then I think there is the trendy people. Mm-hmm. Let me buy this tarot card deck and get in. It's, it, that's, the, okay. Mm. What can you do though? I, I, I hate seeing, let me read you the filth. This is not what this is about. Why do you need to snatch somebody's edges over reading? Like, relax. <laughs> do, do, the reading. <laughs> do the reading and chill the fuck out. Like, right. Oh, no, you're Kearns. Get the shit off. <laughs> yeah, like, I cannot. Like, I can't take it. This is about helping people. It's not about breaking them down. Right. 
do you feel like psychics are the new wellness coaches hmm. or people under this umbrella that's interesting I only say it's interesting and I can agree with that in a sense um, because I think people have gotten tired of respecting medicine. Mm. Um, I think people are now saying, hey, this is not working for me. Let me try this. Right. Um, let me meditate. Let me take shadow work. You know, I offer that to my own clients and it changes their life. And they've been to plenty of therapists. A lot of them are on medication. You know what I'm saying? And it has not worked. So, yeah, I do believe that. I do believe that. So what do you specialize in? Because I know there are different types of, like, readings and stuff. And I know you do other things like shadow work. So what all do you do? Okay, so I practice hoodoo, um, which is not voodoo. Mm -hmm. Uh, Voodoo is a closed practice. Hoodoo is open to, you know, of course, Africans, us. But... Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't care what nobody says. It's just open to black people. Um, cause you know, people talk about that too. Like, oh, anybody can know anybody cannot. Anyway, right. um, <laughs> let's just shut it on down. So I, I teach hoodoo. Um, I also, uh, offer spiritual therapy, which is shadow work to my clients, which is a four to six week course. And we start from, you know, your earliest memory up until now to find out where the boys are at. You know, who were you prior to the trauma? Mm. Authentically prior to the trauma. It's, it's, when I tell you life changing, life changing. Um, and, you know, after that, we go, I offer self-love, self-esteem sessions, classes. Um, I offer relationship psychology. I offer um, manifestation classes to teach you how to manifest. Mm. Um so now Shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, right now I'm going to revamp all the classes and start a group uh, hoodoo class and group self-love uh, self-esteem sessions. And then I'll do private sessions for those who, you know, want private sessions. But what I'm planning on doing is getting, you know, all my clients together and we're going to learn hoodoo together. Um, and I do readings. I offer um, 12 month readings, which are, you know, uh, say we it's it's in the next 12 months, which is future based. Um, 30 minute readings are for our readings. Um, I really do mediumship, which is like tapping into like the other side and allowing them to talk to you because um, they all kind of come to at one time. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Um, and I offer unlimited readings, which is two hour readings. Now, before, because I was going to ask you a question about readings, but this question just popped up in my head. Why do you think voodoo gets such a bad rep? And I know my listeners are going to be hard to be like, girl, but if I'm not mistaken, wasn't voodoo something created by us to help us during that time? Um, well, voodoo was created by us. Remember, it, it, voodoo, 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 and voodoo come from two different places. Okay. Voodoo is, is Haitian. That's a Haitian lineage. Right. Which means that you should be Haitian to practice that. And you have to be initiated. Not saying that there's other people outside of Haiti that, you know, that that don't practice it. Yeah, there's people outside of it, but then that's called Santeria. You understand what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. just different versions of it. But the real authentic, uh, yeah, voodoo is a Haitian thing. It's it's Haitian lineage. Um, Hoodoo is West African. Before we were kidnapped and brought over here, we were, where most of us are uh, from West Africa, from Yoruba land, Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, I did my ancestry. Have you done ancestry yet? Mm-mm. Okay. It's important. I, you should do that. And um, before we left from over there, we knew this magic. It's a magical land. We mm-hmm. knew magic. So... Even in the oceans over there, because we crossed those and people were jumping in into the oceans. Mm-hmm. That's why they are African mermaids. You ever heard of the mermaids that are in Haiti in Africa? Mm-hmm. That comes from the slaves who jumped ship. Mm-hmm. So once we got over here and we were enduring all this suffering, they snatched that magic from us and gave us Christianity. Here's the mm-hmm. Bible. Here you go. So that we can forget it. Remember, all we knew was... uh 
All we knew was our language, you know, from there. And they taught us English and they handed us this book and taught us that our heritage was bad, that it was evil. So this is why people have such a, for any black people, if you, if you look at the Haitian and French war, the Haitians won that war with no weapons. Mm. None. So why wouldn't the people, them people, why wouldn't white people stop that? Why would I, I'm trying to make you a slave. I'm trying to stop, you know, your power as a people, you know? And I feel like uh, also with voodoo, I think people look at it, um, it has such a stigma because of the stories that are attached to it. Right. Listen, y'all don't get this history lesson today, child. <laughs> okay. Because a lot of people go in, you know, yeah, I'm I'm going to be a witch. I'm going to do hoodoo. First of all, if you're black, you're supposed to be calling yourself a mama. Mm. Witch comes from Europe. If you're white, that's fine. But if you're black practicing mamba, not a witch. Um, girl, I could go on and on. Anyway, um, voodoo has such a stigma to it because people go into the practice without being initiated. Right. Well, I think all of this has a stigma to it. Yes, all of it does. But mm -hmm. mainly voodoo. You mm -hmm. know, uh, be careful, pop a leg by. You know, the crossroads and, you know, and Zuli Danto and it's really free to her sister and they will they will tear your life up. That is very true because you're tapping into shit that sh that that's not for you. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, everything is not for everybody. Right. You see what happened to that white girl in the South? She went messing with Papa Legba and went home and died. He, everybody, everything's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have to do a part two real soon because, like, I've been, like, really reading into, like, just more about my lineage and my people and stuff because I didn't start, like, and not to freak the listeners out or anything because I know this is a conversation for certain people. I, I know this is going to go across some people's head. But, like, I didn't start getting into, like, um the spiritual realm and stuff once I experienced uh, losing my grandmother, which you know already. Right. So I think that was very eye-opening and that started, and that allowed me to tap in and stuff because... I don't think I ever shared the story, but um, right before my grandmother passed away, I had a dream of a woman passing away, and I was I was just hysterical, and I knew that that was my grandmother. Wow! And something told me to go um, to go see her because I knew her time was coming. Right. And shortly after I went to go see her, she passed away, and on that day it was so crazy because um. I remember uh, I was at work and I'm like, it was a regular day. It was a, a sunny day in New York. When I tell you my body, I felt like I got hit by a bus. And I thought that I was about to go to the hospital. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Like, why do I feel like this? And that was the day she passed away. Yeah, you were feeling her. Yeah. Like, I felt it was, I was in pain getting going on my way home. Like, it was, I never felt something like this. And I was so scared. Mm -hmm. So... That's why I'm like, I'm really excited to have you on because I feel like when we had our um, conversation, like, and you're just telling me certain things, and I was just like, wow, like, like I know this is real. Wow. Yeah, I remember our, our, our reading. And it was so deep. You know, yeah. like, it was really deep, man. She was coming through strong, your grandma. Mm hmm. What is a reading? So, a psychic reading is basically, um, me tapping into another realm. Uh, me tapping into God. You know, um, he's always, it, since I've, I've, I was born like this, so I can remember, you know, since I was little, having these conversations. He was telling me stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what was he so, telling you? Not if you don't want to go too deep into it, but like. I can give you like my first experience with that. Um, I, 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 you know, it varies on what he tells me. But he tells mm -hmm. me things about the person, you know, what's going on in their life, you know, how they're feeling, um, whether they eat properly, whether they sleep properly, whether, you know, they're lying. You know, I've had sessions with somebody that lied to me and I'm like, you paid for this. Like, they'll finally be like, you know what? You're, that's right. You're right. He, he, he. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. It's just basically, you know, my, my sixth sense, mm -hmm. uh, which is a gift you know, that I'm honored to have and grateful, you know, from God. But it's basically, you know, him talking to me and telling me about the person. And this is how it's always been. 
In what ways can someone prepare for a reading from you or any psychic? Um, I would advise, you know, before reading, maybe you pray because everybody is not, doesn't have the best intentions. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you may be going to somebody who's miserable and not healed and they just, you know, that's where you get reading you to filth because they're not, they're miserable in their own damn life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would pray, um, and I would ask to be protected before my reading. You don't know what's attached to them, you know, and what they're tapping into. Everybody's not tapping into God. Word. Mm -hmm. So it'd be best that you protect yourself spiritually. Florida water, you know, prayer, you know, a candle, a white candle. You I know, have two white know. candles right here. Mm -hmm. and I got <laughs> a green candle for the money, child. Yeah. And a green candle, you said? A green one for abundance, should I say. I, yes. Well, there's stuff that I'll, I'll let you know that you can do to uh, to enhance that. Okay. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> yes. So can you tell if a psychic is real or fake? Coming from, because you're a psychic, can you tell? Yeah, I can tell. Souls recognize souls. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, yeah, I'm a psychic. No, <laughs> you're not a psychic. Um, you're a card reader. These are usually, I get a lot of tarot card readers that tell me that. I'm psychic. Oh, okay. And you're a card reader. The, the cards you, you studied, what they are, and what you flip. You know, you're asking the guides from the east, west, north, and south to do this. All you got to do is tap into God. God created you. Mm. You have this gift. You don't need those cards. So you are a card reader. That's what you are, honey. A tarot <laughs> reader. Okay. When yeah, you, I feel like you had to go off on a couple of card readers. <laughs> okay, when you when you can put them shit down and do it with nothing, then then come on at me. Other than that, and I'm not even being cocky. Like I said, no disrespect. I have friends that read cards, but they know that they are tarot card readers. So it's a different. So in what ways can, like, let's say if one of the listeners want to go to a, want to receive a reading, how can they determine if the psychic is real or fake? Um. Well, what I would watch out for is well, there's a few red flags. If you are getting, a, first of all, if somebody is in your DM asking to read you, do not do it. Yeah. Are booked and busy most of the time or their energy will determine whether you can get a reading or not. They are not reaching out to you. I, I don't reach out to anyone. People reach out to me. And My your page is private. <laughs> thank you. My page is not open. I'm not doing readings on Sweetie and Quavo's Elevated Fight. Why Solange punched Jay-Z in the face? Why J Lo left A Rod and is with Ben Affleck? I'm not. This is real over here. <laughs> and you got to introduce yourself in a t DM to her. <laughs> yes, yes, because you know, I who, did someone piece? Did someone refer you? Yeah, right. because you're not just getting a reading, and you're not just going to get on that page. I'm not reading that guy. So, mm -hmm. um, another red flag is you I know, was so polite, y'all. I was like, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> <laughs> she was. She absolutely I was, was like, and I. I hope this message finds you in great spirit. <laughs> yes, you came with such such good energy. I told you I love your energy. Your energy was beautiful. And um, that's how you come. You know, you come correct. If you get a referral from somebody in the psychic page, it's private. You come correct. Not how much is it? I don't got somebody mm -hmm. like that. Um, can, I need a reading. Oh, you do? I need a lot of things too. <laughs> Hello, peace. How are you? Oh, uh, yeah. How much is it? uh bye like peace i don't need to be bothered with you you're disrespectful you know right. so um a red flag and another red flag is please do not when you get a reading do not tell them anything if they are a psychic they will know did i ask you anything no okay i didn't i didn't have to ask her a damn thing because this is real a mm -hmm. lot of these psychics you go to okay so uh so where does your boyfriend live so What's been going on? I mean, you right. done told the whole damn story, and now she's just regurgitating that and telling, she's just telling it back to you. And now you're mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, she's amazing. No, she listened to what you said and fed off your energy. Mm -hmm. That's about it. I knew you was like, I mean, I knew you was spot on and real because of the person who referred me to you, but I knew you was spot on when you mentioned the agenda of my, my child, my unborn child, and not always, like, I, we had conversations about this. I was like, okay, that's a fact. You mentioned, two particular ancestors that's always around me, which I already knew. Like, you mm -hmm. were saying things that, like, pretty much was giving me confirmation. Mm. Well, thank you. I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Yeah, you, your energy was so clear. And that's an, oh, and another thing, guys. If you're going for a reading, please be calm and relaxed. 
You, mm-hmm. you can't be cooking and running behind your children and make sure they all in bed or make sure you go for work and you're relaxed because the psychic is picking up your energy. I don't call none of my clients. My clients call me so that I can receive the energy. Mm-hmm. So you got to be in a good, you know, like a good space mentally when you're getting these readings. Right. Right. I know that a lot of people are not supportive of what you do. So do you read people that are not believers? And if so, how many people have you turned from non-believers to a believer? Oh, a bunch of them. <laughs> a bunch of them. Um, I had uh, one of my clients, her son, um, actually, he, you know, she was like, you need a reading? You need a reading? And he was like, oh, ma, like, I don't believe in that stuff. And he got on the phone and I told him, I said, listen, do me a favor. Stay away from Chinese restaurants. All I heard was, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. I said, because I see you getting, you know, shot. He said, my cousin just had a dream. I was in front of a Chinese restaurant. Getting, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can I pay, pay for extra time? <laughs> I told him, sure, you can. You can pay for extra time. But it's a bunch of people, you know, that were not, that will test me. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta tell them, you know, and I'll get funny. You got on um you got on Mitch Mask stock. One is green and the other one is white. And people will be like, How the fuck does she know that? Yeah. This is real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, one of my uh, best friends, and she probably gonna get mad at me sharing this story, because I don't talk about this with uh certain people because I know this is a conversation that's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And I slipped up and mentioned you to her and I was like, Oh, she was just so amazing. I I and remind you, my best friend, like, she's Christian, and she doesn't believe in any of this. So when mm-hmm. I was telling her certain things, next thing you know, she wanted to come to you for a reading. So I got a little protective, because I'm like, well, I don't feel comfortable with um, sharing her information, because um, this is, like, something you believe in, and I don't want to force something on you because of my experience. But I've right. always been like this since my mother, my grandmother transitioned. So we I look back and forth, banter, bitch this, bitch that. And I was like, you know what, Abba Name? I understand where I was coming from because I really was coming from a place of sincerity because I was like, I want to know, like, what made you change or what made you want to explore this? So I was like, let me just give you her information and then y'all just go from there. But I was like, you know, come correct. I said, because she is spicy. She will curse you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's spicy. That's funny. Which, which I knew that she wasn't because my best friend is very respectful and polite. I would just like, I don't know, I guess I got a little hesitant because I'm like, why would you want to explore something that you're not comfortable in or you never right. want to be a part of? Right, right. Um, and I and I just want to say to you, thank you. Um, I appreciate you for your protection. You know, for me, because energy is everything to me. And the least bit of hesitation, like psychics can feel when you're closed up. Mm-hmm. So if you're closed up, I can't get in and I'm not going to force myself. Right. And you've already paid. I don't give refunds. Mm-hmm. So, because that's my time. You understand? I'm a mom. You know, I have a life. I have things going on. So I'm taking time out. And if you're closed up, I can get to you. And usually people like that, um, you know, Christians. And I know how she feels. Um, because you're caught up between church and they're saying in church that this isn't real. Mm-hmm. Okay, but um, you have prophets in church, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cause because when I was in Baptist church, I was prophetess. Mm-hmm. Blank, blank, whoever I was. I was prophetess, my last name. So um, I'll use prophetess Smith. I was prophetess Smith in the church. Mm-hmm. Prophets do what? They tell the future. They give you prophecy. That's what psychics are. Prophets. So how is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so contradictory because it's like, how is that wrong? But you'll right. sit in church and listen to a psych, I mean, a prophet. What? Mm-hmm. There's so many things that I can pull from church and share with you right now that are contradictory to having a gift, to what they say this is evil and it, they're smudging. It took about mm-hmm. sage and it's, but the Catholic church, they smudge. That, that smoke that's coming out of that bowl, that's smudging. Mm-hmm. Y'all do rituals. You drink the body of the blood of the Christ and eat the body. You're drinking wine and biting a cracker. That's a ritual. Mm-hmm. The prophets in the church are psychics. Come on now, I go on and on. <laughs> I just, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Yeah. 
Well, do you think that the media play into the negative connotation that's affiliated with psychics, mediums, and everything else? Okay, so, of course. Um, in history, too. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, not for nothing, the government was well aware of this a long time ago. And they mm-hmm. used psychics in the government. They used psychics in the army and the navy. Mm-hmm. Um, p- people that can see. So that they can see when wars are going to strike and stuff like that. Oh, yes. Um, also, you know, anything connected with witches... They connect with something dark. That's not what this is. It's our birthright. Hoodoo is, is stuff. We use stuff that's that's in the ground. Five finger grass, which is not actual grass, but five finger grass, bayberry powder, red brick dust. That's from a brick. When we are, when we want to banish something or, 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 you know, I can tell you about a, a dick spell that I do. To make uh, you come to me and say your man was cheating, and we want to make his dick burn. All right, no problem. Let's get a banana. We're gonna get hot uh, uh, red pepper chili flakes. We're gonna get vinegar. We're gonna get lemons. That is what all shit that grows from the earth, correct? Well, with the exception of vinegar, but yeah, that's made with stuff to ferment. So it's like, what are y'all talking? Like, what is connected to evil? What? Mm-hmm. There's duality in everything. God has. Uh, uh, a nighttime and daytime, right? That's duality. God mm-hmm. is God is feminine and and masculine energy. There is a yes and a no. There is a man and a woman. Everything's duality. There is good and bad in everything. So mm-hmm. why is this? It's so taboo because who wants to? And I feel like it came from them people. It came from white people taking away our magic before they brought us over here. Let's go to them as well. If I if if I take something that see religion is control, mm-hmm. religion is control. Spirituality is freedom. So if now even the the, the, the witches in um Salem they burnt them because then we would have no more control. Do you understand what I'm saying over society if there's no religion? Mm-hmm. I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you I need ten percent of your income. I can't tell you. You understand. Spirituality is total freedom. So, yes, I do believe the media and, you know, history play a huge role. Yeah. How far does the history of psychics go back? Because I feel like when I was doing my research, I didn't see a lot of people that look like me being depicted in the history that they were sharing on the Internet and stuff. Do you see a lot of people being depicted that look like you with the truth, even in movies about Egyptians? Okay, so that's, that's... That's that's the real answer. That they, they they're not never gonna give us our props. They're not gonna tell the truth, and it, it is to control. Remember that. Always remember that. The truth. The CIA just confirmed that there are portals and that astral projection is a real thing. You think they're gonna be like, yeah, there's people who can who can make shit happen with a candle and a cup of water? Nah, they're not gonna mm. do that. They're not gonna. They're not gonna do that. But see, we're awakening now. We're not giving a fuck no more. You understand mm. what I'm saying? And we're coming. <laughs> Niggas are tired, child. Yeah, I'm telling you, people is fucking tired. So you know what's happening? People's grandmothers are pulling out those books. Here you go, baby. What's this grandma? Oh, this is a book of read Psalms and do this with this candle. Mm-hmm. Get that orange candle for that roll opener. Get that jar. Put this person's name in it. Fold it up. Write the name down in the birthday. Fold it up. Put it in a glass full of vinegar and ammonia and put some nails in there. Okay? Go take that after and bring it to the crossroads. To Papa Legba. You understand? This is our culture. This is our birthright. This is where we come from. Mm. Yeah, I'm so into this conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Because I think that, like, I don't think people understand, like, the power of the tongue is mm. something serious. Like, when I get in, when I meditate, I have my little white candle or my green candle, and I pray, and I just keep repeating the same thing over and over again, I even amaze myself at the, some of the things that I was able to manifest. Hmm. There's all kind of things that you can do that's simple mm-hmm. to create the life that you want. There's a 369 method. There's meditation. There's a red marker. And I just work with my feet. 
I don't I don't need to do any other kind of magic. And I work with one saint, Saint Expedite, and the rest of it I do with my feet. He'd be like, You work magic with your feet. What? Yeah. Yeah, what do you mean by that? You work magic with your feet. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to have a conversation off and go for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because but, I have to get all this for free, child. Yeah, no, nah, nah, Yeah, you got to pay yeah. for that. But uh, I'm a teacher. I'll teach. I'll put you on what it is. Thank but you. Uh, yeah, all you got to do. And when you finally realize it, you're going to be like, this is all I have to do. Look, I'm, I'm looking at my feet now. Like, what y'all got for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something else you need to do with it. But yeah. And you know where that comes from? That foot thing comes from the Egyptian. Mm-hmm. you understand um, and if you look at the hieroglyphics from their time they were in touch with angels and aliens it's drawings of it in the pyramids mm-hmm. so I believe they got this information from them so the magic was passed down okay so if you see the angel that means the angel is connected to God mm-hmm. so when they want to say oh if Buddha is this is evil if Buddha that is that Oh, yeah? Oh, okay, why? Because we would have rose up thousands of years ago over you motherfuckers, and right. we wouldn't be experiencing the shit we're experiencing now, like being treated like shit, because we're just walking around black? This shit is deep, honey. Hmm. Even when I was doing my research, do you think that, um, because I'm pretty sure you, you remember Miss Cleo. Oh, my God. Right. Do you think that they, that they use her God bless that as a mockery? Um... I, I, you know, that's a great question. It could have been. Mm-hmm. It could have been. And I absolutely believe that that could be true. Um, mm-hmm. If we can make a, especially look at black women. Right. We're going to make a mockery of you guys because West we know Indian. that this is Yes. We know that this is true. And we know that, uh, we know that this magic is real, but we'll, we'll, we'll make a mockery of this and make her look like a total scam artist. Right. So that she can stray away from it. Of course. And then it turned out to be a scam because she wasn't real. Mm-hmm. Right. But look at what they did with Dion Warwick. The psychic network. Do you remember that? You may be a little young. What happened with that? Okay, so Didn't Dion they Warwick, sue the psychic war- network? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So Dion Warwick was the spokesperson. And they offered her money, you know, a lot of money. And she was the spokesperson for this thing. So this is a pattern. Mm. It's a pattern, completely. Cause this is the network that Miss Cleo was working for, right? No. Oh, okay. So it's separate things. Miss Cleo was her own entity, but Miss mm. Cleo knew magic. That's what God's telling me that Miss Cleo knew magic. She's from the island. She knows. That's mm. where most of it happens. At all of that passing from Africa, past those islands, all of that. Yes. That's why they are mermaids in the Caribbean. Do your research about that. Research Mami Wata. And anybody who's listening who is Caribbean knows these stories. Jamaicans, Haitians, yeah, Puerto Ricans, all the Caribbean knows these Trinidadians. They know about these mermaids. These mermaids in Guyana. Yes. They don't look like what you, you know, what we think they look like, beautiful and no. But they do exist. Would you say there are some misconceptions of being a psychic? And if they are, where are they? Oh, that you, that is on 24 7. Mm. You know, my That's ex used to be like, yeah, my ex used to be like, just tap in, tap in. You'll be able to, <laughs> nigga. I'm not, listen, I'm at, I'm at work right now. I'm not tapping into shit. Okay. <laughs> tap in. You a psychic. That's, I hear that all the time. You a psychic. Oh, you didn't know that was going to all right. So last year, I predicted that Biden was going to win. Mm-hmm. And I put that up days before he won. And everybody was like, you know what? Then we know it's true. He is going to win. He ended up winning. After that, people were hitting me up. Uh, hey, sis, this people I know. You know where my package is on Amazon? They were supposed to deliver it today. Do you know where it's at exactly? You see people start using you for stupid shit because they, <laughs> yeah. Hey, sis. You know, do you think my beautician's gonna be on time today? Like, come on, man, come on, come on, come on, come on. You think it's any chicken sandwiches left at Popeyes? They've been taking all of them shits. Like, come on, it's just it just gets crazy. So I think the misconception is that you know we're always on, and another misconception that people are kind of um that we're not 
fully human. And mm-hmm. that's not true. You know, a lot of people, mm-hmm. when, when I'm reading them, they don't know how to interact with me. You know, us, it was like natural. Mm-hmm. You know, we was just cutting up and I was talking and you was just listening. You know, we, it was, some people are very, uh, and it's no need to be afraid of a psychic. They just have a sixth sense. It's human, just like you. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had people ask me, like, you an angel? <laughs> like, sweetheart, I bleed just like you every month. No, I am not an angel. <laughs> right. Uh, well, uh, have you been to the other side? Yeah, I have. I, yeah, I've floated around there. That's called astral projection, and anybody can do it. I am no different from you. Mm-hmm. So I think those are the misconceptions, you know? And then we have a lot of people that just don't trust all around the board, you know? Well, what made you like this? Who, you know, you get a thousand questions. It's like, made me like this, like God. Right. Well, who who do you talk to when you're doing these reads? I talk to God. What do you tap into? God. I think people associate psychic with like demons or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's because of what society has attached it to mm-hmm. because they don't understand it. No one, under- I, I, it's rare that I meet somebody that's like, unless they're like me, who's like, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, people think you're tapping into the devil. Like, who? He ain't got no power over here, honey. I don't acknowledge him. Right. Because I'm God's child. And that's who gives me, there's no way I could do it without him. Without him, I'm just who I am. Mm-hmm. I was going to say my name, but I'm just who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So I read that a psychic isn't a medium, but a medium medium is a psychic. So what's the difference or is there a difference? There's a difference in some cases. Now you can be psychic and you can be a medium. And then you could just be a psychic or you could just be a medium. There's mm-hmm. some people, so let me break this down. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Got no lesson, child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to school about. y'all tonight, you know what I'm saying? So that you're 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 educated on the subject. But um some psychics can just read. That's what they do. They can see backwards and forwards. That's what we call it. So you can see backwards into the person's fa- it past, you can see the present, and you can see forward into the future. Some psychics um also can mediumship where they talk to the dead. The dead are coming, you know, they're, they're you know, and when people hear, oh, the dead, the, 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 automatically the evil thing comes up. No, because they lied to you in church and told you that no one on earth can speak to the dead and the dead don't talk. Uh, yes, the fuck they do. Mm-hmm. This is why we have dreams about our ancestors who have passed on. You know, I know my grandmother used to come to me all the time. You know, my brother, he's come to me. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different realm. There, it, this is why we hear it's eternal life. Mm. It's the next transition. We don't die. We move on. We transition. Mm. So once you understand death, then you can understand what being a psychic or a medium is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, then you have mediums who just talk to the other side. Yeah, and they can't read, you know, so. Mm. I'm just curious. Do fortune tellers um, still exist? Fortune tellers are tarot card readers to me. Oh, okay. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, fortune fortune tellers are on well, that's what they called them back in the day, fortune tellers. But they are tarot card readers. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, can you read yourself? No. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna. I, do you need me to? I'll, I can explain that. Mm-hmm. Um. So what God does for me and which is so beautiful, he saves that aspect of being human for me. Because if I could read mm. myself, I would not learn anything. Earth is a school. So if you know, when I get with this man, this man's going to hurt me. No, you needed to go through that so that you can extra love yourself or that you can learn to love yourself because maybe you thought you did. You understand? So you would have to pass that test. Earth is a school. We're here to learn. A lot of us are reincarnated. We've been here plenty of times because we didn't learn in the last life. So if I could read myself, what would I learn? I wouldn't know hard times. I wouldn't know because I would be saving myself from everything that could help me grow. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm thankful and grateful to God that no, I cannot. And if any psychic says that they can read themselves to the, t- like they know everything that's happening, they're lying. And I'm saying that tonight and I don't give a fuck who's listening. It's very true. You cannot read yourself. Now what God does for me, I can feel what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to explain that. Like when I met, um, when I met my ex-husband, I felt love. I knew mm-hmm. somebody was coming towards me, but I didn't know who. So I felt all the emotions of being deeply in love. And I was so in love with myself at that point that I manifested him. So I could feel him coming. Oh, mm-hmm. I can feel like something's going to happen. Or I can think and then somebody will call if I want them to call. Um, mm-hmm. And that's most of us. We can do that. So it's nothing different from you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm now... But my own life, no. And I'm grateful that God doesn't do that for me. Mm-hmm. And he's not doing point? that for anybody. Yeah. Right. So he's not doing that for anybody. So any psychic, y'all listening, anybody who say, yeah, I, I can read myself. That's bullshit. I could, No, that's bullshit, bitch. Because if you, <laughs> if you, then that means you're not learning nothing. You understand that you want Earth to be in school. Earth is a damn school. But if you're learning everything, you're not learning. You're, if you know everything, you're not learning shit, Right. If right. you're a master, then when was you ever a student? Get out of here with that stupid shit. I, I've been telling, and I heard somebody say that before, like, how you can't read yourself? Because I, I can't. I can read mm-hmm. myself. You're lying. Right. So, <laughs> you know, but tarot card readers, I think they are able to, you know, pull the cards out on themselves. You know what I'm saying? And read the cards. That's different. But for you to be a psychic, you read yourself. That's a lie. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do you think that we all have this gift within within us because I feel like with dreams like I had plenty of dreams I feel like I feel like but my aunt also told me that this was in our family but like besides my grandmother dream I remember I had a, I felt a very masculine energy and I didn't have a boyfriend I wasn't dealing with anybody and the masculine masculine energy was just very um it was very heavy so I called all my close niggas I'm like hey are y'all good this and that and come to find out it was my father and remind you I never met my father a day in my life mm-hmm. that I can remember. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like we all have this gift within us, but some people just are able to tap in and not suppress it? Yeah. Um, but I feel like some are more heightened than others. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time is due to blockages. Um, mm-hmm. Blockages and restricting religions. Um, and I'm only saying that because I was in church as well. Mm-hmm. And I knew what was going on with me. I, I, <laughs> they knew too. Mm-hmm. But oh no, you can't tap and don't, don't, you know, like be careful with that. Oh, but if we having a a Friday night revival, you offer me bottles of water. Yeah, go ahead, Prophetess Whoop Smith, whoever I was back then. Go ahead, tell them, girl. Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> Thanks, God. Go ahead, pass the plate. It was a business. Mm. Um, but I feel like some people are more in tune. I I can you know some people are dreamers. My sister has dreams all the time. Me too. And the, and the, yeah, you okay? So you're the dreamer. So you get your your gift is through dreams. There's people who can just dream and then tell you something that happens. You know, you're a dreamer. But we all are born with intuition, especially women. We all have that intuition. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think that's where it starts. Now, in order for you to, you know, if you wanted to tap into something deeper and see if you had a gift, you need to be working on opening up your third eye. You have to eat correctly to do that because there are codes for each chakra. <clears throat> Once all of them are open, that's when you would get a little more deeper into your soul where you're seeing through your third eye, not through your eyes. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I see through my eye. One eye. Mm-hmm. I have I have two eyes, y'all. I got both <laughs> eyes. Nobody been I'm talking about I see through my third eye. So I see different <laughs> I wanna buy hit you interviewing no cyclops and nobody to get I got both right. of my eyes beautiful. Um but yeah, so you know, you have to look through your third eye in order to tap into that. But I believe yeah, everybody has some type of gift. And even when I had this, I just had a dream recently and I went to an event. And I was like, yo, I dreamed of this, but I just can't see the person or anything, but I see colors. 
And then I hear something. And then when I was at the event and I saw the colors and, I, and she said what I heard in my dream, I was like, come on now, bitch. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> you me, Lord. You me. That's right. And that's all he's doing. Um, And mm-hmm. most of the time, you have probably been there in a past life. That's just a mm-hmm. repeat. So what happens is, and I call it a soul tape. They just put the same tape in. Because once mm-hmm. you get back down here, it's because you didn't learn something. Because once you master all of that, you go home. Now, if you get up there and they say, okay, well, you know, they're doing your intake, what I call intake, and that's that large room. And uh, they're playing back your life, asking you questions. If you didn't learn something, you're coming back. Mm-hmm. You're coming back. You ever see little kids and you be like, God, you act like she act like an old woman. Mm-hmm. She is an old woman. Mm. That little baby is an old woman. She's just a baby now. <laughs> and a lot of them before. And a lot of them know it. Yes. Yes. Mm. Is there something that you can do to like to perfect your craft? Like I mean not your craft, your gift. Like do you have to like study do you study things or like like what do you do to like always I don't want to say stay on point because this is a gift from God, but like is there things that you can do to make it better? No, mm-hmm. it's just what it is. And I'm saying that I don't mean to be so vague, but mm-hmm. I don't, I feel like people who do that are like people who like, I'm used to this, if that makes sense. Like, this is how it's always been. I've never had to do anything to heighten it or, right. you know, like decrease it. It's, it's, it's just what it is. Mm-hmm. It, it's nothing I can do to, to, to turn it up or turn it down. Yeah. Right. Um, so, no, but if you want to tap deeper, you know, for people who are not psychics and you want to tap deeper, then you work on your chakras. Start mm-hmm. with your crown and work on your chakras. So I know that you said that you had this gift when you was a kid. So what was the first time you realized on what was going on? Ooh, so that's kind of a sad story. Um, what happened was, I was five. Um, my mother knew since I was three. Mm. And I was five. And I saw my uncle, Jeffrey, walking through a tunnel. And I remember looking at him walking through this tunnel. And I kept, like, asking him, well, where are you going? And he was like, go back that way. And I said, but don't, don't leave. And he disappeared. So I ended up getting, I ended up uh, waking up and I told my mom, I said, I saw Uncle Jeffrey walking through the tunnel. So she's like, what? What tunnel? I'm like, I don't know. It was a tunnel, mom. So later on the next day, we got a call that he had been murdered in Chinatown. Mm. He was an ice man and they set him up. He's working with Colombians and he got murdered. And but I saw him transitioning, and she like, oh. kinda, yeah. So she like kind of after that, it was like okay, like um, all right, my kid is different, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, that was my first experience, like with it. Mm-hmm. So is it safe to say that people develop this uh, psychic abilities during their childhood or traumatic events? Um, I would say I would say childhood because either you're born with it, either you have it or you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not something that you can create. Um, even when I hear people say, "I'm practicing mediumship," and I'm like, "Practicing? How do you like, practice? How do, right? How did? How, how? What are you talking about? Like, how do you do that? What What does that mean?" Well, I'm 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 tapping in to be a psychic. You can't tapping into what? You know mm. what I'm saying? Like either you want to learn, um, and once you learn, you'll know that you can't be a psychic. You can be a tarot card reader, you know. But learning that, no. Once you learn spirituality, you know that you can't do that. Either God, you know, He wanted you to be a psychic or not. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's the bottom line to that. So was your grandmother teaching your mom? Did she not teach you? Was teach your mom by like the religion and stuff or the spirituality of voodoo? Um, so no, she didn't teach my mom. Um, my mom just knew. My mom just knew. 
things, but we, you know, she didn't talk to me about it. I think my mother was kind of spooked out. Mm-hmm. My grandmother was very into the other side. A lot of things would happen in the house. Um, you know, she would teach me certain things to do spiritually. Mm-hmm. And I grew up around it. So I didn't think I, I probably thought everybody's grandmother, you know, right. was doing that. I, I didn't know it was anything different. That was your and, normal. Yeah, it was my norm. Um, as far as like the spells, um, you know, you want to free somebody out your life. You, you stuff their name in a cucumber, put them in the back of a refrigerator. I mean, the back of the freezer, freeze them out. Literally. Mm. You understand? So she didn't have a lot of stress in her life. <laughs> she <didn't>, Clearly. <laughs> she didn't have a lot of stress and she didn't want for nothing. So, you know, my mom, um, my mom's kind of like, she's pooped out by it, by it all. And I think even by me to this day, like she still doesn't, she, she finds the fun and the magic part now. Like, you know, I know what you can do, but like she told me the other day, like, I'm so used to who you are that I'm not mm. ever like, yeah, I'm used to who you are. Like, I know who you are, you know, and I know that you're different and you have gifts and you can do things other people can't do. You know, well, not other people can't do, but like, it, it's a group of y'all somewhere, <laughs> you know, I'm not one of them. So I've been used to since you were little being like this. Mm-hmm. And this started when I was three. Yeah, I didn't do my first prediction until I was five, you know, close to my uncle. But when I was, the lady walked up to her on the beach and she told her that baby was born with a veil over her face. And she was all 20 years old. She didn't know. She's like, what are you talking about a veil? She's like, yeah, she has a gift. She's psychic. And my mom was like, oh, okay. She said, she picked me up and kind of looked at my face. Like, she said, and my my eyes look different to her. I'll never Mm. forget she said, your eyes look different to me. Like you, like, why, like you were awake. Like she activated you. She said, and I, I was just like, after that, I was like, okay. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. But I come from a lineage of spiritual people on both sides. So, so how was it in church for you? Um, I was trying to find my way. Mm-hmm. I didn't particularly, um, I knew, you know, because my grandmother, of course, practiced Hulu. And, you know, I was around Santeria growing up. and But I wanted to find my own way. And I was in, like, half, like private school all my life, you know. Most of, like, my elementary years, I was in uh, private school. Mm-hmm. And they, all they talked about was God. And I've always felt close to him. I needed to know what he was, though. Not who. I needed to know what. And I discovered that I had a different relationship with him than what was being portrayed in church. Mm. And he showed me some things and that changed my whole everything. I was like, okay, this is a bunch of bullshit. They're using his name to run a business. They don't care about the word. And the word is not even his. It's certain books in the Bible that are real, but certain ones aren't. And mm-hmm. I can share that with you and know that it's true. Mm-hmm. Everything that you think you know, like you have to unlearn going into this. Yeah, I was just about to say, going into this, I do feel like you're going to unlearn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. 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 And some of it's heartbreaking, you know, because you're like, I believe this for so long. I knew this to be true. Girl, for you dig deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, hoodoo is in Psalms. Psalms is nothing but a big book of spells. Huge. Yeah. I heard that before. Yeah. And when you ever hear in church, speak it into existence. Yeah. Jesus. The, that's manifest. Exactly. It's the same shit. Yeah. It was the evil. Like, they, they, I'm, them church people, they get on my damn nerves. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. It really, because if y'all don't cut the shit, like, stop it. That's what I said earlier when I was um, when I pray over different certain colored candles and stuff, and I really get to deep like I get into a deep prayer and I keep repeating the same thing over and over again, and it gets me to a point where I get so emotional and I start crying. But it's like it's the same same thing. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And what do people do in church when they catch the Holy Spirit? They cry. Mm -hmm. What's the Holy Spirit? God. That's God moving you. It's the same thing you're doing when you chant. Mm -hmm. No difference. So. When I hear people 
put this thing on spirituality or hoodoo to make it seem like it's some type of it's some type of demonic force making you do something. It's 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 mind blowing to me because it's really not. If you know, if you do your research and you practice, this is our birthright. Mm-hmm. You were handed Christianity. So all the Christians listening, your ancestors were handed Christianity after being kidnapped from their their the the, the place that you know they they were they were. The place they were from, which is not out of ten. If you're black, you come from West Africa. You come mm-hmm. from Africa. They were kidnapped from their land to be dragged over here and and, and treated like animals. Them people knew if they had let us keep that magic, we would have beat them like the Haitians beat the French. You mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to do that to us. Anything I say, I can back up with facts. I know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to learn. <laughs> I'm willing to learn as well, you know? But right. I know what I'm talking about. Were you ever nervous about your gift? Like, did no, that scare I... you? No, because again, I was a baby this time I grew up. I've always seen things and had you know, experiences with entities. You know, I had experience with, with Archangel Gabriel. Who would be ready to see an angel? Right. I can't even describe that to you. Um, you know, I grew up like that, so it, it never freaked me out, but I did keep it a secret from the people I grew up with, my friends and stuff, because I mm-hmm. didn't want anybody to think I was crazy. People always, already thought I was crazy because I was able to tell people stuff. Mm. But I never confirmed what I was. You know, I know I know who I am, but I never conferred what what I am. So So then when did you start telling everyone? Because I know this is what you do also as your business. hmm Okay, so <laughs> so it's funny, I was running for my gifts. I was running for my gifts. I got very deep into it about uh, eleven to maybe sixteen, you know, I would read people, I wouldn't care. Uh, my family. But I kept running from my gift and I kept running into wounds. I couldn't find like what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I was getting in trouble, all kind of stuff in my 20s. And finally, I had got my heart broke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my heart broke. And. So, a boy, ex boyfriend? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, broke my heart. And, um, yeah, you fucking trash if you're listening. Anyway. <laughs> Stop. But with shadow work, God bless you. With shadow work, God bless you. And that was the journey God put us on. Yes, that is shadow work, ladies. That's how you get past that. You don't say what I just said. You trash. You know, no, God bless them and send them on the bed. It's just a lesson. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so I didn't know what to do with myself after that. Mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, and I remember waking up between three and five for two months straight. Yo, what does that mean? Well, three o'clock is the void hour. The void hour is the hour that the spirits come through. It's called the dead hour. Child. So, uh huh. So between three and five, you know, either you're being waked up or you're being awoken by ancestors or somebody, right? So, you know, not to cut um, you off, and I'm not trying to even scare the listeners, but no lie. That's how I know my grandmas are like, Especially the one who I was really close to is always mm-hmm. with me because when she transitioned, I always woke up at four something in the morning. Every mm-hmm. se- I used to be like, "Girl, what's up? What you what you want, Dana?" Yeah, because <laughs> I knew it was her. Mm-hmm. But I she never could up. hear what she wanted to tell me. Mm-hmm. Because she probably didn't. Um, when they first cross over, it's just like when a baby is born. Mm-hmm. It takes them like two months to find a voice. You know, they're crying or whatever, but. To find a voice, it takes them a little while um, to bring that energy over to the other side. So you might hear like muffled sounds, or like yeah, you, know, you might hear something. Yeah, you heard oh, a muffled my, sound. Oh my god, I feel like I'm about to get emotional because I remember when she transitioned, and I went through like a really crazy depression. And when I used to wake up at four something in the morning, um, so in my grandmother's old house, I used to hear um, our rooms were right next to each other. 
And she used to get up literally like at four or five o'clock in the morning. And she used to always sweep and clean the hallways and stuff because she was like a very clean person. So wow. fast forward to when she transitioned, I got my first place by myself. And um, when I used to wake up, I used to hear the sweeping noises. Mm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I always sleep with, I always sleep with the door closed. I don't sleep with no doors open. So I always okay. heard the noises and I used to be like, yo, I, I, it sounded crazy and I didn't know who I can speak to about this. But I'm like, I know this is her. And then mm-hmm. eventually when I couldn't get no sleep and I was looking crazy because I was sleep deprived, I'm like, Nana, what's up? <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta get some sleep. Like, I'm okay now. Like, what's good? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that was her. That was her um, doing what she was doing, watching over you, uh, you know, in your space, you know, watching over you. Um, mm-hmm. And that's just what they do. Mm. You have to, I have to start teaching you about ancestor money. You got to take Hulu class with me. No, I am. I am. Well, we're going to talk about the air because you're not I'm in the process of getting my home. So like, we're going to talk because I really want to keep this going. But go back to your story. So you was, you was waking up between three and five. Three and five. I was waking up, waking up, waking up. And during that time I had went to a botanica mm-hmm. and oh, I said, I need to read in. And she said, okay. And when I got in there, the lady was so beautiful. She was an older lady. Beautiful. Right, her. And I said, um, she said, okay, sit down. I said, all right. She's reading me, reading me, reading me. She said, babies keep popping up. She said, I feel Oshun energy. Mm. I said, I know. And she said, well, that's who, that's who has your head. Your Ori. I said, I know. She said, well, if you know, now you're responsible. I said, responsible for what? I knew what she was talking about. Like, it's time for you to acknowledge her and serve her. I was going to ask you, can you explain that? But I feel like that's going to be a whole nother topic. Because I feel like I know that you are very fluent in the Yoruba religion. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the person who referred me to you she want to find out who has her head. Yeah, that's a whole uh, process. Yeah. That's a whole process. And you have to go. An archangel has to come down. It's a lot with that. Yeah. Um, but she needs to. Um, and that's funny that you said that because I get Yamaya energy from her. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, she said, you're the daughter of Oshun. And I said, okay, I know. She said, well, take these things. You go home. Here's a blockbuster candle and some blockbuster soap. You have blockages. I said, okay. I knew that. Get home to all of this stuff, right? I wake up one night. My room is completely wet. I'm wet. Water. This is water. I, I feel somebody pouring water on my head. Mm. At the time, I was in my house by myself. I knew what was going on. Oshun had come to cleanse me. So I was, I got up, I laid in my bed, I sat up in my bed, and I allowed her to do that. My whole room was wet. I guess Mm. she, I guess she knocked me back into sleep. When I got up, my room was dry. Everything was, he wouldn't have known anything happened but she did come and cleanse my head and from that point everything changed Mm -hmm. I knew I had to I knew I had to step into my purpose and start my business and help people I'm here to help people and that was my purpose and I was running from it and my life has changed completely since then Mm -hmm. man that is deep (laughs) it is it's it's more girl I know you have to go to the bottom like (laughs) I know I know I feel like I'm going to definitely bring you back on the show because I think that once I start doing my shadow work with you and this and that, I'll be able to uh, ask you questions that just be able to have a better understanding of everything because I feel like this is like, it's really deep. It is. It is. It is. And it's stuff that I've experienced and seen that I can say that I'm blessed Mm -hmm. to have seen. You understand that I couldn't even describe, I can't put into words. And I mean, I can, but you still wouldn't catch the, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole thing. But Mm -hmm. um, that day was when she came and cleansed my head. I was like, okay, this is it. 
you got to. It's time mm-hmm. to show up. And my business took on. And everybody hit me up. Can you read me, please? I, you know, please. This person referred me, that person referred me, but I was always told you keep, you know, don't be flashy. Don't, don't, don't open your page up and be careful who you read. Mm-hmm. You know? So, but it's a beautiful experience. But can we call this a business? Because I feel like putting the word, the term business on it just don't sit right. Like, I feel like what you do, because I have experienced it, is just way more. Aw, uh, thank you, honey. Um, I just say business to be professional, but no, actually it's not. And you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I should, I should uh, refrain from using that. Um, it's my life purpose. Right. That's what I do. Um, you know, I've learned that it's not about me. And I hope that y'all are understanding this while we, when we're doing this interview, that life is not about you. Mm-hmm. And once people understand it's not about them, then life will get better. Life will get so much better once you know it's not about you. I didn't, I wasn't, this wasn't my thing for life. That's not what I wanted to do. Right. You know, but God was like, okay, like this is what you're going to do. It's not what you want to do. It's, it, it's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And I love what I do. When I say love, love. And I work until the wee hours. Yeah, you do. But I, yes, you know that. But I'm mm-hmm. up and I'm refreshed the next day. But that's God. That's Oshun. That's the spirit, guys. That's the ancestors giving me the strength to still be a mom, to still work a day job. <laughs> mm-hmm. and still do this so I'm grateful mm-hmm. do you ever like take a break from it because uh, <laughs> I think I, I know it's a lot and I know especially when my friend told me all the other stuff that you do and you're just listening to you during our conversation I'm like damn like that is a lot and you a mom <laughs> like you have a life mm-hmm. outside of this so, like do you ever just take a moment for yourself like alright guy like I need a moment <laughs> Um, yeah, like that's a great question. Um, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. Um God, you know, and I'm and it's and let me let me just make this clear. God is not a forceful God. I am willing and more than happy and grateful to do anything for God. I would do anything for God. And because he will do anything for me. So if he's telling me yeah, it's 11, but this person needs, you know, to know this message that I'm up and I'm on it. It's not mm-hmm. about me. I could be saving somebody's life right now. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't tell him I'm tired and I could be tired. I get tired. I'm just like everybody else. Right. But they give me the strength to push forward. But um, yes, in October, I will be taking a week vacation. <laughs> yeah. Just a week from it, you know, because I know people do need help, but you know, my my friends, my my close friends and family always tell me like, you know, maybe you need like a month to yourself, you know, mm-hmm. um, because it's a lot of energy that you take on on a daily basis. So right. I have to uh, constantly take spiritual baths. You know, not constant is not like every day or nothing, but you know, twice a month I take my spiritual baths. I keep my aura cleansed and you know my heart clean, and mm-hmm. that's how I do it. Have you ever did a reading where the energy was just off and you kind of regret it doing that reading? Ooh! Yeah. Girl. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. <laughs> and usually before readings, if your energy, I can already feel it. And mm-hmm. I'll, you know, somebody had sent me money, like, hey, please, I need you. And I told them, I'm sending your money back. I, God stopped me and told me, no, let them go to somebody else. He, he directs me, you mm-hmm. know, this is not, no. So I had this reading one day and it was like I was talking to a brick wall, but I didn't know why at first. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling this person, listen, if you don't open up, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to tap into your energy. Why would you pay for something that you're not like, well, I'm, um, cause I'm a skeptic, you know, but my, my, my friend told me that you were really good at, okay. So if you're a skeptic, don't use me as a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyway, we're reading, reading, reading. Quiet. This person is quiet. I'm I, to the point where I have to be like, "Hello." I hate doing that. If I'm reading you, you know, when we got on the phone, it was like you was talking to an old friend. I like right. that kind of energy. <laughs> Let's cut the fuck up. Let's <laughs> laugh. Let's talk. You know, don't be on there all quiet and shit. You know, are you dead? Did something happen to you? Like you passed out, bitch? Wake up. Right. Like, 
you know, so. And the only time I was quiet, y'all, because I was writing and taking notes. Right. And I knew that. And I was aware right. of that. But her, her energy is super dope. So I knew it wasn't like, you know. Right. Anyway, so. so was he key. <laughs> yes, we was. Down. And I love that. I love that. So towards the end, after I finish, this person bust out. When I say bust out and like crying hysterically. And I had never experienced that. Mm. I said, what? I said, hold on, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. Because I asked, I said, okay, you know, so we towards the end, we're going to pray. You know how to do it. We're going to pray. Right. Let's bring down the energy. And she cried so hard. And I said, what's wrong, honey? What happened? And she said, it is real. Like, this is real. This stuff, you know, like, you, I, I didn't tell you nothing. You don't even know me. I got to change my life. And it, I mean, she was just going off. That was two years ago. And she is progressing. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my most supportive clients, uh, have, has done four tiers of shadow work, um, has lost a ton of weight, um, mm -hmm. has met a wonderful man, but she was so miserable. Mm -hmm. And she told me that, like, I was so miserable prior to you. Like you came and you just changed my life and it's stuff like that, that, that makes me want to just keep going and going and going and doing whatever God told me to do because of people like her. Mm -hmm. You understand that may have been closed up, you know, and I was ready to be like, you know what? I don't want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's spiritual. It, this incense and, and, and crystals can turn into Newports and Colt 45. You understand? <laughs> so it's like, you know, come on, bitch. You know, I don't have to look, waste my time, you know, but then that's, 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 that's not, that's, that wasn't healed me. Now healed me understands that people need me and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. You understand? So yeah, I've had those. <laughs> And do you believe in crystals? Of course, honey. Okay. No, because I don't think I never heard. I, well, I mean, we only talk so many times, but I never. I don't know. Oh, I got to show you my crystals. I have a whole collection. Uh, you need crystals. Yeah, uh, I have a and few crystals. Okay. What kind of crystals do you have? So the one that carried me as soon as I leave out the house is, um, and please correct me on that, you know, see, you know Enunciation. Uh black tourmaline tourmaline? Tourmaline. Tourmaline. Tourmaline, yes. Mm -hmm. So I carry it with me everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. Keep these niggas away from me. Anybody protection. with that's not mm -hmm. protection, that's not of God. Right. Um well, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm trying to I am growing my business. So at night, because sometimes my mind just be all over the place. I have my um I think it's a rose quartz. Rose quartz is to bring in love, yes. And then I also have my um, amethyst stone. I was just getting ready to say, do you have an amethyst? Yes, amethyst yes. is for the crown. Mm -hmm. um, and let me just make this clear to the audience. Um, crystals, there's another stigma to that too. Mm -hmm. And that's like it's trendy too. Now it's trendy. Very, very trendy. But this has been, my grandmother used to have these a long time ago. And they come from mines. Mm -hmm. Mines are part of the earth. The earth produces crystals, which are here for us to use because they have power in them. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make that clear for the audience. It's not just rocks. My brother loved to call them rocks. Oh, you got your rocks on you? <laughs> you, you need you need one, motherfucker. You need you need a few rocks. And yeah, I also yeah. have my um what's the other one? Uh Centrin? Centrine? Oh, that's good for wealth. That's good for bringing yeah. abundance. Yes, mm -hmm. I have that one. And I can't, I'm looking at the one I have now. It's a pretty silver one, but it has like glitter in it. Oh, pyrite? Is it pyrite? Pyrite. I was getting ready to say pyrite as well. So for, oh, I got to teach you some stuff. You got, yeah. Come on, y'all. Y'all a bitch with a little one dimensional, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I always do this for my for fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I am woke. Mm-hmm. You really are. <laughs> okay. So how often do you recommend people come to you? Because I feel like, like, I know that I can't, I know that for me, I'm not going to always come to you. Like, I'm going to do the work and stuff as far as like the shadow work and that. But I, I feel like you shouldn't always get a psychic reading like every month or is that true? Um, I'm okay. So I let all my clients know because again, they are tarot card readers. I'm not a tarot card reader. I'm a psychic. So what I do is I let my clients know you have a five reading limit with me mm. because if I read you, 
and you need therapy and you need to remove blockages and you need to do all this stuff and you're not healing. And I'm not asking you to do shadow work with me. Go get a therapist if that's what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But you got to heal. I'm not going to keep taking your money and telling you the same shit. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need your money. You can go, go to, go to, go to somebody else. Go to whatever. There's a million tarot card readers on Instagram. There's a million self-proclaimed psychics. Go to them. I'm not doing no more than five readings with you, and I'm saying that out of love. I don't want you guys to think that I'm just some spicy, feisty psychic. No, I, I'm not. And when I say I spicy, love. when I say spicy in the beginning, I meant that with love because I get your. I know where you're coming from. Like, yeah, oh God, bitch, yeah. Like, give us a program. Like, we're not exactly. doing this, right? Exactly. Because my clients are happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And if you see those hashtags, I don't come to play. Right. I come to I come to bring growth. I come to bring evolution. I come to bring self love to you, awareness. Yes, we are all human. We're gonna make mistakes, but if you learn, if you unlearn what you thought you knew, and you do it this way, it's gonna work out better for you. And incorporate God into that. You understand what I'm saying? But if you keep coming to me talking about raggedy ass, you know what I'm saying, Ramel that you with. You know that done had babies on you, and you want me to do a love spell on? Listen, you're not getting that from me. <laughs> you need to you need to do shadow work. You need to heal off them daddy issues and mommy issues and who hurt you when you was 14 years old and the nigga who fucked you and didn't hear from them and, mm -hmm. you know, all kind of shit. You need to heal from that. You understand that you won't keep attracting raggedy ass Ramel. You'll be attracting productive Paul. You <laughs> understand what I'm saying? Some high army. Hill Terry. Yeah, Hill yeah. Terry. You know, you'll be <laughs> attracting that. But if you raggedy, you're going to keep attracting rags. That's mm -hmm. just what it is. The universe is a, is a mirror. And whatever you feel about yourself, that's the type of man you will attract. Mm -hmm. And that's just the truth. Everybody's out here. I have somebody tell me, I just want somebody to make me happy. And I had to tell her, you are the person to make you happy. Right. Once a man sees how you love you and you're happy with just you, you don't need, he can come and add to that, but he shouldn't be the total reason because when he leaves, he's going to take his happiness with him. And then you're still empty. Mm-hmm. And it's next. So now you're now you now you got your legs open because you think you got that guac and that WAP three thousand, and you just like everybody else. Okay, <laughs> step your fucking spiritual game up. All right, yeah, that. <laughs> like I'm so tired of oh, motherfucker. Like even you want to learn, you understand? I'll take you in like a little sister, you know, and take you under my wing and show you because I don't want you hurt. I right. don't want you. You know what I'm saying? I don't want your heart broke. You know, because either we gonna get the spiritual. The spiritual food that we need, or we gonna get in the car and whoop his ass, and I can't because right. I'm not there no more. I'm not getting no car to whoop his ass. Right. Mm. We're gonna get into shape spiritually. Let that man go because that was a lesson. And if right. you can hang on to him, God is gonna make the experience every time you go back is gonna be worse and worse and worse and worse because you didn't listen to God and you didn't learn. Earth, mm -hmm. you better pay attention, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you recommend that everyone receive a reading sometime in their lifetime, even if they don't believe? Um, well, you know, if they don't believe, you don't force stuff like that on people because then they won't receive the message. Right. Um, even if you tell people down to the socks about themselves, they'll feel like you're tapping into something demonic. No, motherfucker, this is God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if he was in church and a prophet told you that, you would, oh, glory, hallelujah, you know, and, you know, so... I don't push things up because you don't believe. No, but mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like everyone's sugary. I feel like people should, you know, but you have to be tapped into that. That's something I wouldn't, you know, force on anybody, you know, if they're not mm -hmm. into it. So last but not least, because I feel like I could talk to you for like hours. I'm going to definitely bring you back on the show, especially when I started doing my, uh, my shadow work and stuff. Cause I'm like, we're going to make some things happen. Like however I can support you, okay. especially with things uh -huh. growing with PhD, like I'm gonna definitely uh bring you on board with some things I'm working on because she did tell me y'all things are gonna take off for the kid. <laughs> yes, they are. You watch out for her because they sure are, and I'm gonna support you as well. You're a beautiful energy. Um, your life is gonna be very abundant, and you be careful. Be careful of people smiling and laughing with you and hating you in the background. You have always been who, who you are. And your energy can bring envy sometimes from other mm -hmm. people who don't have the same energy. Make sure you you use your third eye. Your eye is open and you're paying attention, but you are blessed. You are going to live a, an abundant life. And um, you're going to be okay. Yeah. I believe okay. it. 
So last but not least, what is some advice you would give to our listeners who want to be, who want to receive a reading, who want to seek out a psychic? Because I will, if y'all are interested in receiving a reading from her, I don't know, because I'm very protective of certain people. If y'all not going to be <laughs> driving my girl crazy. So <laughs> if, you know my, if you're a listener that I've been kicking it with, or if you're going to send me an email telling me why, you ain't got to tell me your business, but why you want her contact that I might consider, because I don't want people to just go to you and be asking you all types of dumbass questions. Oh no, you know I don't I don't work for free. Once right. I, I did enough free work in the beginning. That was my walk with God to do free everything in the beginning. <laughs> yes. And once He gave me that green light and told me, "Hey, you charge these prices to do that," that was it. I said, "Okay." Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That I'm <laughs> but y'all, I don't want y'all to think that you know I'm here for the better of you. I'm here for the better of women. You understand? I'm here to help women. I'm here to help anybody, but particularly women, especially sisters you know, to evolve, to recognize our self-worth. We are the most underappreciated women in the world. You understand with the most magic to us, with the most everything. I'm sure all of you listening are beautiful souls. You understand what I'm saying? And, and it's hard for us out here. So what we have to do is stick together, you know, and support each other. And that's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to support PHG. And I think it's a beautiful platform. And I'm just so proud of you. I really am. Thank you. Thank you. But I had a great time speaking with you. Oh, I cannot wait for us to like con connect more. Like I'm just so excited about learning more stuff because I really do feel like my third eye is winking. It's, it's starting to open up a little bit. I think it's always okay. been open, but I think I need to, I really want to learn more stuff. And I'd rather learn it from somebody who I trust and feel comfortable with. So, oh, thank you for trusting me. That's a big word. I love, I love that word. You know, that's an honor for people to trust you. So, thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. It was amazing. It was an and honor. If, and if y'all have any questions, comments, or concerns, or y'all want to say PhDs do it better, please make sure to email me at hello at the professional home girl or the phdpodcast.com. And until next time, everyone, later. The Professional Home Girl Podcast is a production of the Black Effect Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Don't forget to subscribe and rate the show. And you can connect with me on social media at the PHG Podcast.